Aha! Today, Peter and Zach's dream has come true. They've bought a trailer. Now they're ready to begin their long-planned journey through mystical places all over the country to make their vlog. But first, they need to pack. There are three boxes, but the guys can only take one of them. Which box should they choose? The first one. Take a look at the reflection in the mirror. The second box is empty. And the food in the third box is spoiled. Several cockroaches are crawling around too. Probably not the best company for a road trip. Peter's aunt, Sarah, gave the guys three patchwork quilts for the trip. She said that she made all three of them by hand. But it's a lie. In fact, she made only one quilt and bought the remaining two online. Sarah was embarrassed to admit it because she was famous for sewing everything by hand. Can you tell which blanket is handmade? The third one. Look at this piece of fabric. It's identical to Sarah's skirt. She sewed these two items using the same material. Finally, Zach and Peter hit the road. They headed for the first spot. It was an abandoned library on a hill. Subscribers told the guys many ghost stories about this place. But our vloggers were skeptical and wanted to explore the building on their own. They walked around the library, recording videos and taking Polaroid pics. But they didn't meet any ghosts. When they returned to the trailer and looked through the pictures, they freaked out and locked all the doors. They left this creepy place as soon as possible. What scared them so much? Both of them are in the photo. But then, who took this picture? The guys made a stop at the local coffee shop to get some hot drinks. As soon as they came in, Peter grabbed his camera and started recording. Why? Here's a ghost. The guys ordered sandwiches, but the barista, Fiona, had to prepare online orders first. So she asked the guys to wait for their food for a while. Fiona cut one loaf of bread into four pieces in 12 seconds. How much time does she need to cut the same loaf of bread into five pieces? Sixteen seconds. To get four pieces of bread, she must make three cuts. If it takes her 12 seconds to make three cuts, it means she makes one cut in four seconds. If Fiona wants to cut the bread into five pieces, she needs to make four cuts. Four seconds for each cut makes it 16 seconds in total. Oy, my head's spinning. Zach noticed a fortune teller shop in the basement. It could make great content for the vlog, so he went downstairs. But as soon as Zach entered the shop, all doors and windows disappeared. Wicked Witch offered the guy a deal. She had two identical cards. One of them had escape written on it, while the other said marry me. Zach could pick only one card. If he got the escape card, he'd be free. And if he picked the marry me card, he'd stay with this creepy witch forever. The witch didn't want him to have a chance to escape, so she wrote marry me on both cards. Zach anticipated that the witch would do so, but he still managed to win and escape. How did he do it? He picked a card and dropped it in the fireplace, saying it was an accident. The witch had to reveal the remaining card that said marry me. According to the rules, there had to be two different cards. So the witch had nothing to do but agree that the card Zack had picked and burned must have been the escape card. Peter and Zack continued their journey. In the evening, the guys saw these three hitchhikers not far from a bus stop. They could only pick up one person. Who should they choose? This pretty girl is a werewolf. Hey, look at her toes. She has already begun to transform because it's the full moon. And this harmless-looking elderly lady is a runaway criminal. Take a look at the poster hanging at the bus stop. It's her portrait. As for the guy, he looks pretty harmless. Yeah, his clothes are indeed stained with something red. But that's just some paint because he's an artist. Look, there are art supplies in his backpack. The artist, whose name was George, told the guys about another interesting, mysterious place. Hmm. 
The locals called it the haunted house. One week ago, George heard strange screams coming from inside. He went to check the house. A minute later, he ran away screaming. What scared him so much? The portrait of this creepy clown is moving! Zack and Peter decided to explore that haunted house. When they entered the building, they didn't see any portraits. But they heard screams coming from the basement. They walked downstairs and found a loudspeaker that replayed the screams over and over again. There was a clown costume in the closet. Zack and Peter found three suspects among the neighbors and asked them just one question. What did you do one week ago? Mr. Daniel said, I was on vacation in Spain for two weeks. We came back yesterday. Jessica said, I have very sensitive skin. I wouldn't spoil it by wearing a clown mask. As for Henry, he said he had been preparing for his tests at college 24-7. Who is lying? (laughs) Jessica. Hmm. Zach and Peter didn't say anything about the clown. But she started making excuses anyway. The guys arrived at the local hospital to film an interview with the famous professor, Dr. Thompson. But first, he had to help four people. Kyle complained, I'm misophonic. I wash my hands a hundred times a day. Kelly explained, I'm afraid of heights. I can't even ride a bike. Fred complained, I have a strong fear of water. I can't even look at a faucet. And Jenny claimed that she had claustrophobia. She always fainted in elevators. Dr. Thompson knew for sure that only one of these people told the truth. Can you tell who? Fred can't be afraid of water. He has an aquarium with fish in his house. Jenny lives in a tiny van, so she can't have claustrophobia. And Kyle's apartment is too messy for someone who has a fear of dirt and germs. So it's Kelly. She sleeps on the floor, which is normal for someone with an abnormal fear of heights. Next stop, creepy caves. Zack and Peter went to see ancient ruins in the middle of the woods. Many people had disappeared there. The guys heard weird screams coming from the cave, ran toward the sound, and got lost. Suddenly, they saw three tunnels. The first tunnel was filled with fire. A hungry vampire was waiting in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with poisonous apples. Which way should they choose? The third tunnel is safe. The guys don't have to eat those apples. After their epic adventure in the cave, Zack and Peter went to the supermarket to buy some groceries. I'm guessing the apples made them hungry. Can you see a ghost in this room? Here it is! Peter and Zack found out that people had seen some zombies in this abandoned town. So they decided to make a stop there and check for themselves. The town looked empty. The guys were very disappointed. But suddenly, a crowd of hungry zombies popped out of nowhere and started chasing them. The guys ran into a hospital and locked the door. Zombies began breaking the door down. Luckily, a helicopter with a rescue team arrived quickly. It was going to land on the roof. Zack and Peter needed to get there as soon as possible. Help them find the shortest way. Here's the way. After saving the guys, the rescue team invited Peter and Zack to go skydiving together. They agreed and put on parachutes. They took this picture inside the plane right before the jump. Can you tell which of these people is in danger? This man over here, he's wearing a regular backpack instead of a parachute. The guys made a stop on the shore of a famous mysterious lake. They went fishing. Suddenly, a mermaid jumped out of the water and dragged Zack into the lake. Peter jumped into the water to rescue his friend. Finally, he found Zack wrapped in seaweed on the rocks in the middle of the lake. Three mermaids had gathered around Zack and were singing their songs. When they noticed Peter, they said, We'll set your friend free if you guess which one of us is not a real mermaid. Can you help the guy? (laughs) 
Mm, this lady over there, her tail isn't real. Sometime later, Peter's aunt, Sarah, called them. She was very upset. She found out that she had left her diamond ring in the guy's trailer. Hmm. Peter found the ring and said, no worries, we're going to send it back to you. But there was a problem. If he sent it by post without locking the box, the ring would be stolen. Both Peter and Sarah had some locks, but neither of them had the key that would open the lock of the other. Still, they managed to make it work and Sarah got her ring back. How did they do it? Peter locked the box with the ring and sent it to Sarah. When Sarah received the box, she added her lock and sent it back. Peter received the box and removed his lock. Then he sent the box back to Sarah. She opened the lock with her key and got the ring. Man, these folks lead complicated lives, don't you think? Once, a prison guard accidentally overheard very disturbing rumors. Someone was planning a prison break. The guard watched all the footage from the surveillance cameras and discovered that two women had been behaving suspiciously. One of them was a former bodybuilder, muscular, with short hair, and covered in tattoos. The other was quiet and reserved. She preferred to spend time on her own and sometimes cried in her cell. After watching the video several times, the guard figured out which woman was planning to escape. Can you do the same? It's the second prisoner. There's a file in her bun. She can use it to get through the metal bars. Mark comes up to the table. There are three apples, but only one of them is safe to eat. The other two are poisonous. Unfortunately, Mark can't skip breakfast. So, which apple should he eat? Look, this apple has a caterpillar in it. It means there's no poison in the fruit, and it's safe to eat. These three women, Jessica, Mary, and Olivia, went shopping. Two of them are pregnant, and one is just trying to steal a watermelon. Can you tell which one is hiding a watermelon? It's Olivia. She's wearing heels. It's not the kind of shoes a pregnant woman would choose to wear. Nathan, a successful entrepreneur with a multi-million dollar business, and his friend Jackson, a famous private detective, returned from a long-term trip abroad. They decided to stop by at Nathan's villa on the way to the city. When the men entered the house, though, they saw that everything more or less valuable had been taken away. The entire villa was a mess. I've only been away for a month! What happened here? exclaimed Nathan. Jackson took an apple from the dining room table and started to munch on it thoroughly. The lock isn't broken. It means the person who took your stuff had the key. After a while, the detective asked Nathan to invite three people. Mia, Nathan's niece, told Jackson she hadn't visited her uncle's home. She had been having serious problems with her car for already two months. And the villa was too far away from the city to get there by public transport. Sarah, the maid, claimed that she had stopped by several weeks ago to bring some food and tidy up. But since then, she hadn't been to the villa. Adam, the gardener, told the detective he had been on vacation and had just returned. He even offered to show his plane tickets to Jackson. The detective figured out immediately who was behind the mess. You have 8 seconds to figure it out. It was the maid. She said she brought food several weeks ago. But the apple Jackson grabbed from the table was perfectly fresh. Once, Ms. White heard someone crying. It was her little student, Abigail. The girl told the teacher her cookies had been disappearing from her locker. Someone had been taking them for already several weeks. But Abigail didn't know who. Ms. White decided to help the girl. They equipped the locker with a simple alarm that had to go off if someone who wasn't Abigail opened the door. They hid behind the corner and began waiting. In 10 minutes, they heard the alarm. When they reached the locker, it was already empty, and there was no one nearby. 
but Ms. White noticed somebody disappear behind the art room door. She rushed inside, but everything looked normal. And still, the teacher needed no more than a minute to understand who had been eating Abigail's cookies. Look at the picture of the art room carefully. Can you find out the answer within 8 seconds? It's the girl on the left. Her painting's black and white, but there are only various shades of blue on her palette. And maybe the cookie crumbs are a giveaway too. I don't know. One perfume company hires new staff. They must swear an oath of loyalty to the company if they want to get a job. Ten people are saying the words of the corporate oath simultaneously. But some of them are cheating. Help the directors figure out who these people are. This guy keeps his fingers crossed. And the man on the left is standing with his legs crossed. They won't be loyal to the company, so the director doesn't hire them. Two influential media moguls are having lunch at an expensive restaurant. They're discussing the merger of their companies. The transaction amount is several billion dollars. They're whispering since the terms of this deal are top secret, and they suspect that someone can hear them. And they're right. Some curious people are eavesdropping on the conversation between the two businessmen. Try to find them. The girl at the next table is reading a newspaper that is turned upside down. She's obviously trying to overhear what the billionaires are talking about. This guy over there is listening to music, but the headphone wire is not connected to anything. Another girl is sitting at the table in the corner with a cocktail. But instead of an umbrella, there's an antenna in her glass. She's recording the conversation. Where are my employees? A boss shouts. He's furious because three people haven't come to the office. He calls each of them to find out the reason. All three tell him they got ill. The boss doesn't believe them, so they have to arrive at the office. Mary is wearing a warm jacket, hat, and scarf. She sneezes, coughs, and looks sick. Lori is walking on crutches. Her leg is in a cast. Sometime later, Michael appears. He's got a hand injury, and now he can't type. The boss is sure that one of them is faking. Who is it? Mike's left arm is broken. But his phone is in his left pocket. He must have used his broken arm to put it there, which means he's pretending. Apparently, he just didn't want to come to work. Ice will melt if you heat it. But if you heat me, I'll become solid. What am I? I'm an egg. You buy this thing to eat, but you never eat it. What is it? It's a plate. Mia was going back home one evening. It was 11 p.m., and she had to cross a small dark park in front of her house. Suddenly, she heard footsteps behind. Someone grabbed her bag and ran away. The girl called the police, and they questioned four suspects. Jack said, I was choosing an outfit for a party. Camilla was getting ready for her final exam at home. Andrew told the police he had been watching birds in the park. Nora was at her yoga class. After the interview, the police understood who was behind the robbery. Can you? It was Andrew. At 11 p.m., it's too dark to see birds. James left a folder with important documents on the table in his home office and went to a business meeting. When he returned, he found out that the documents had disappeared. James had three suspects. His brother said, I've been swimming in the pool since you left. I haven't seen or heard anything. The cook replied, 
Tomorrow, we're having a party. I've been preparing the food. The security guard told James, I've been outside all this time, checking the garden for mice. Who knows where the documents are? It's the security guard. His job description doesn't include pest control. An accident happened at a busy crossroads in a small town. A driver who caused the crash left in a hurry. Luckily, several witnesses managed to describe the car. A police officer headed to the suspect's house. There, he saw a car that looked exactly like the one from the description. But its owner claimed that he had spent all day at home. The police officer knew the suspect was lying in no time. How? He touched the car hood. It was still hot from the engine that had worked not so long ago. You're walking along a railroad track. Suddenly, you see a speedy train approaching you. Instead of getting off the track immediately, you run toward the train. Why do you risk your life this way? When you notice the train, you're on a bridge. You can't leave the track right away and have to run to the closest place where you can do it. The royal family of Ravania were going to visit the city during their world trip. And, of course, they were all bringing their precious crowns with them. They asked the mayor of the city to take special precautions. Thank you. So, he placed the crowns in a safe in a hidden room in his office, guarded by a couple of security officers. <laughs> However, the next morning, when the mayor came to check on the crowns to report to the royal family that they were safe, he started panicking. Can you guess why? It's because the crowns inside the safe are not the real ones. The first crown has a price tag on it. The second crown is broken. And one of the gemstones on the third crown is missing. Oh no! That wouldn't happen if it was the real thing. The mayor wanted to make sure that whoever had stolen the crowns was caught. He also hoped the police would find them before the media learned about what had happened. And the only person who could help him was Detective Zelda. So, he immediately called her. The detective arrived at his office and inspected the secret room. She noticed something that might help her with her investigation. Can you figure out what it is? There's a piece of paper under one of the fake crowns. The thief left a note. Detective Zelda read it. Mm. Dear Maya, I'm very disappointed in you. This accident has proved how inept you are at providing comfort and security for your guests, as well as your citizens. I believe I can be convinced to give the crowns back if you pay me a large, and I mean it, sum of money. Mark my words and count on what I say in my letter on this matter. Here is my contact number. 19.1-1.3-19.1 and 13.3-1.2-6.3-9.1. Yours truly, the riddling man. What can you make of this number? Well, the mayor thought it was a phone number. He immediately took his phone and dialed the number. But just as Detective Zelda suspected, no one answered. In one of the last sentences of his letter, the riddling man underlined mark, words, count, and letter. That must be a hint. The number before the dot indicates which word you should look for in the note, and the number after the dot tells you which letter you need in that word. For example, 19.1 means you need to find the 19th word, which is comfort. The letter you need is the first one, which is C. When you do that for every number, you'll get Cafe West. Before Detective Zelda left for the cafe, she decided to check the security camera footage recorded at night. 
The mayor took her to the surveillance room. There were three different monitors, each showing the room from different angles. Detective Zelda realized only one of them was still recording live. Hmm. The other two were showing fake images. Which recording is real and why? Do you remember what the room looked like when Detective Zelda was inspecting it? The clock certainly wasn't on this wall. It was on the opposite one, so the footage on the first monitor is fake. The footage on the second monitor isn't real also. If you look closer, you'll see a moth flying around the room, but it repeats the same movement over and over again. That's badly edited fake footage, so it makes the footage from the third monitor the real one. Oh, yes. Detective Zelda rewound the footage and found the moment when the riddling man had broken into the room. He was covering his face, so it was impossible to tell what he looked like. Still, Detective Zelda managed to notice something that could help her find the criminal. Can you tell what it is? If you look at the lower left corner, you'll see someone walk into the room and leave it quickly while the riddling man is stealing the crowns. Hmm. Could that mean that the riddling man has a partner? Hmm. To find that out, Detective Zelda questioned all the security guards who had been working the night shift. The first guard, George, said that he'd been keeping watch in front of the door. The only time he left his place was when he took a short bathroom break. The second guard, Joe, said he'd been standing in front of the door to the mayor's office all night and the only person who took a break was George. Hmm. The third guard, Brian, said he'd been right there by the door as well. Hmm. Hmm. Detective Zelda knew only one of them was telling the truth and the other two were lying. Who is the liar? Do you remember what the shoes of the man who entered the room looked like? White sneakers, and that's what Brian is wearing. So he's lying. And since Joe didn't mention that Brian had left his place, he's a liar too. George is the only one who's telling the truth. Ciao. Brian and Joe immediately started begging Zelda. We can't end up in jail. We promised we didn't steal anything. You have to believe us, Detective Zelda asked. Then why did you lie? They said that they had heard some noise coming from the room while George was away. They decided that Brian would check the room and Joe would keep watch. When Brian saw someone in the room, he got scared and ran out of there. He told Joe that he would rather lose his job than have something bad happen to him. As for Joe, he lied because Brian was his best friend and he didn't want him to get fired. And since they never saw anyone enter or exit the room, they thought they were imagining things. After all, they were very tired. What do you think Zelda can do to check if the guards are telling the truth? She can check the surveillance footage of the street outside the building to confirm that nobody entered or left. When Zelda couldn't see anyone even walk across the street, she came to the conclusion that Brian and Joe were telling the truth. Yeah. The detective decided to check the secret room once again to figure out how the riddling man had gotten inside. Sometime later, she managed to spot another hidden door. Can you see it too? The bookcase is actually a door. Oh my god. She examined the door to figure out how to open it. She noticed three buttons, but only one could open the door. If Zelda pressed the wrong button, the door would get locked for good, and she would not be able to figure out where it led. Which button should she press? Take a look at the books next to the buttons. One of the titles is meaningless, while the others make sense. That must be an anagram, a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of another. When you rearrange the letters in the title, you'll get the second button. Mm. Detective Zelda pressed it, and the bookcase door opened. 
The woman saw a narrow hallway with stairs leading down. She took a step, and the door closed behind her back. She tried to force it open, but it wouldn't move. The only thing she could do was go down the stairs. She ended up in an underground pit. Inside, there was nothing but a shovel and a sign that showed her that she was around the pit. In the hole to the left, there were venomous snakes. The pit on the right was filled with poisonous gas, and on the ground right above her head, there was an angry dog with sharp teeth. What should she do? She should dig upwards. She needs to listen to the sounds the dog makes and wait for the animal to fall asleep. Then she should walk quietly past it. That must be how the riddling man entered and left the room. Detective Zelda didn't want to waste any more time, so she headed to Cafe West. A guy sitting at the table in the corner caught her eye. He looked suspicious. When Detective Zelda started walking towards him, he quickly wrote something on the newspaper he'd been reading. Then he ran away through the back door. Detective Zelda tried to catch him, but failed. She checked the paper and found another note. It said, You're not the mayor, but I'll give him one last chance. It looks like you work for him, so bring me $20 million in cash. We can meet at the building that has the most stories in two hours. What building does the riddling man mean? The library. Of course, Detective Zelda was not going to give him any money. She took an empty bag to trick him into believing she had the cash so that he wouldn't run away. She went to the library. When she entered, she saw the riddling man wearing the same sunglasses and coat. He was waiting for her in the riddle and puzzle books section. Then, suddenly, someone accidentally pushed the woman. She dropped her bag. It fell on the floor and opened. The riddling man saw it was empty and understood that this was just a plan to catch him. He ran away. But he dropped something while escaping. It was a library book, and there was a library card inside. It had three different addresses of three different people who had borrowed the book before. Zelda immediately realized which was the riddling man's address. How did she figure it out? Remember the note the riddling man wrote to her at the cafe? The first address is written by the same person. Detective Zelda had two police officers break into the riddling man's apartment. They found the crowns, but the criminal was gone. For some reason, Detective Zelda felt that she would see the riddling man again. For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents here. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she's the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So, you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on the girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. Suddenly, someone shoved Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. She had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. 
When Stacy gave the necklace to its rightful owner, Neptune snapped his fingers. His guards brought Luke. Neptune said, I'll let you go home safely, but you have to choose the right door. There were demons behind the first door. They were ready to eat anyone who dared to come in. There was lava all over the floor of the room behind the second door. And finally, there was a laser beam that could cut through anything it touched behind the third door. Which door should Stacy and Luke choose? The third one. They can crawl under the beam without touching it. You were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. A mysterious biologist invites you to his home for dinner. He takes you down to the basement and puts three plates of weird items on the table. One has wild mushrooms with white gills. The second is filled with castor beans. The third has some fish brains. Which one is safe to eat? The plate of fish brains is the only dish that isn't poisonous. Someone got into Matthew's house during a severe rainstorm and took a lot of expensive stuff. The man called the police. They came over and started to interview the neighbors. Nicole said she lived alone and worked from home. She was inside the whole day. Jerry explained he was a chef in an Italian restaurant. He came back from work only half an hour ago. Sophia told the police she hadn't left home because she was ill. Who was the intruder? It was Nicole. She claimed that she'd been inside the entire day, but there was a wet umbrella in the corner. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m., Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now, they have two options. To take a high-speed train for $100 to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take a high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow! How did she get through security? When it was time to finally board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. Detective Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there, but by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boots. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. 
At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. The police have been looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, in a weak voice, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he spent the last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jesse told the detective he'd sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. The man even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's behind the accident with Kyle? Police immediately noticed that Billy had showed just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Uh-oh. Tommy was exploring old caves outside the city when he got trapped in a mysterious dungeon. There were three ways out, but only one of them was safe. Behind the first door, a fire was raging. Behind the second door, there was acid rain which could melt any substance within seconds. Behind the third door, there was a huge brown bear that hadn't eaten for two years. Which way should Tommy choose? Tommy should choose the third way. No animal can go for two years without food and survive. Barely. <laughs> it was a stormy day and it had been raining for several hours straight. A car accident happened in a tunnel. The yellow car crashed into the red one. The driver of the yellow car said it had been raining so heavily he hadn't seen anything. So the accident wasn't totally his fault. But the police asked the man to stop lying and claimed it was all his fault. Why? The accident happened in the tunnel. It couldn't be raining there. Mrs. Cabell is the owner of a small company producing expensive designer cups. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, she got a call from her bank. The woman found out that someone had stolen all the money she had saved. Mrs. Cabell realized it must have been one of her workers. So she asked each of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she'd been talking to their clients and looking for new ones. Atticus, a potter, said that he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Sierra, a designer, said that she'd been working, but also admitted she hadn't really been productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Atticus, there are five working days in the regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. There was an incident in a secret laboratory. One of the scientists released a substance that turned people into vampires. Detective Reed arrived at the scene to interview three witnesses. The first scientist, Michael, said, I stopped by the lab this morning to pick up some notes. The machines were working just fine, and I didn't see anyone. I took the papers and left. The second scientist, Lindsay, said, I closed the lab at night. One of the PCs was faulty, but I was very tired and decided to leave it till the morning. Unfortunately, I overslept. And the third scientist, Jennifer, said, I got up early and went to the lab to check the devices. No one seems to have entered the room. I fixed one of the computers and left. Which one of them was lying? Michael is lying. One of the computers was actually faulty, and Jennifer spent the whole morning fixing it. If Michael had walked into the lab, he would have known about it, or Jennifer would have noticed him. So he must have entered the lab after the others had already left. But why would someone release such a dangerous substance? Michael didn't want to confess, so Detective Reed decided to investigate the crime scene to find out who was behind this. Take a look at this picture. Is there anything suspicious?
it looks like Michael dropped an ID card. And look, it doesn't belong to him. The name on the card is George Wilson. Let's ask him about the incident. Detective Reed went to Mr. Wilson's office to ask him about the incident. Oh yeah, I gave my pass to Michael, Mr. Wilson said. But that's only because I had left something in the lab. My glasses. I didn't have time, so I asked Michael to pick them up. Well, that's not a very clever excuse, but how can you prove the man is lying? There's an open glasses case on the table, and the glasses are inside. But Mr. Wilson, didn't you say that you left them in the lab? Oh, did I say my glasses? Sorry, I meant my papers. I made this mistake because I asked my secretary Shirley to look for my glasses yesterday. Find something to prove Mr. Wilson is lying. There's a calendar on Shirley's desk. Yesterday was her day off. It's marked red. Mr. Wilson is lying. Mr. Wilson was arrested, but people have already begun to turn into vampires. Can you guess who's actually a vampire? The woman on the right. She's putting on her makeup, but do you see? She isn't reflected in the mirror. Meanwhile, those who haven't turned into vampires gather everything they might need to survive. Which of these people is more likely to stay alive? All these supplies won't protect the guy on the right from vampires. As for the girl on the left, she's stocked up on what she can to defeat the vampires. She has a higher chance of survival. Let's check out the subway. There are two women here. Which of them is not pregnant? The girl on the left is not pregnant. Look, her belly is of a very strange shape. That's because she has hidden her survival supplies under her clothes. Vampires decided to throw a party. Who among those present is actually an undercover human? The guy on the left is a human. He's wearing makeup and false teeth. Nikki is also trying to survive. She packs her things and decided to move to a neighboring town. But suddenly, a vampire charged at her car. He damages the vehicle and takes away some supplies. Fortunately, he doesn't manage to bite Nikki. She escapes. Nikki has to stay home. The next day, a young man knocks on her door and asks for help. Is it okay to let him in? Nope. He has the same scar on his cheek like the vampire from the day before. Nikki continues to hide at home. One day, some girl starts knocking on her back door. Please help! A pack of vampires is chasing me! Nikki opens the door. The girl is out of breath. But she manages to say, They're almost here. Can I come in? Is it safe to let her in? No, this girl is a vampire. Anyone in this situation would immediately run inside the house, but vampires can't come in without an invitation. Nikki was checking her house and suddenly noticed that there was someone in the attic. She approached the shadows. It was a father and daughter. Please don't kick us out. Sorry, we snuck in without permission. We've been trying to hide from the vampires. The father said, is it safe to let them stay? Yes, firstly, they're sitting in the sun, but their skin seems to be okay. Secondly, they managed to enter the house without an invitation. That means they're humans. Nikki let them stay. Let's take a little break. Time for some quick riddles. Think fast. A vampire lived in a one-story black cottage. He had a black cat, a black fish, a black computer, a black armchair, a black desk, and a black phone. Everything was black. What color was the staircase?
there was no staircase in that house because it was a one-story cottage. Three vampires are walking fast. The first vampire says, Two other vampires are walking behind me. The second one says, One vampire is walking behind me and one is walking in front of me. And the third one says, Two vampires are walking in front of me and two are walking behind me. How is that possible? These vampires are walking in circles. Humans, vampires, and werewolves gathered in one mansion. There are as many werewolves as there are vampires. There are as many vampires as there are humans. How many creatures are there if three of them are werewolves? There are nine creatures in the mansion. Three werewolves, three vampires, and three humans. Now let's go back to Nikki and her adventures. Nikki, Peter, and his daughter Becky decided to go to another town together. It takes two days to get there. They drove all day until night fell. Now they have three options. First, they can continue driving until the morning, despite the fact that they may meet a lot of vampires along the way. Second, they can spend the night in the nearest cave with bats. And third, they can sleep in the car. Which option would be the safest for them? Sleeping in the car is a bad idea. Vampires can sneak up on them in the middle of the night. A night in a cave is also a bad option. Vampires can hide among these bats. The safest option is to keep driving. Although they'll probably meet vampires, they have a chance to survive if they drive faster. They drove really fast and managed to reach the city by the morning. But when they got out of the car, they discovered they were surrounded by vampires. To escape, they need to choose one of three roads. On the first road, there's a pack of vampires. They're coming straight at the guys. There are wild hogs on the second road. The third road leads through a dark alley with hundreds of bats. Which of these three ways is the safest? The second way is the best option because the sun illuminates it, so vampires can't follow Nikki and her new friends. Plus, these dogs don't look too unfriendly. The guys reach three stores. Now they need to decide which of the stores is safe to enter. Nikki, Peter, and Becky look through the windows to see what's inside. The first store is empty, but it seems to be full of traps. The second store is full of survivors, but they look dangerous. And the third store seems empty as well, but it's completely dark there, and you can't see anything except for dozens of bats. Where should Nikki lead her friends? The first store is the safest. If Nikki, Peter, and Becky notice these traps, then the chances are high they'll be able to avoid them. It's worth a try. There's a man in the city who's trying to survive by hiding among vampires. Nikki spent a week photographing vampires to figure out who he was. Will you be able to see who is actually human in these photos? You can see this man has all four photos. In one of the photos, he's eating garlic bread. And in this one, his leg is exposed to the sun. He's only pretending to be a vampire. Nikki and the others decided to invite this man to join their group. The man was delighted and said that his name was Douglas. He was a journalist looking for safe places for people. He suggested creating a password that only humans could figure out. They came up with this one. H-A-W-U-H can you guess why? If you look at the reflection of this word in the mirror, you will see HUAN or H-U-W-A-N. Flip the letter W and you get the word HUMAN. But only those who get reflected in the mirror will be able to solve this puzzle. Nikki and her friends settle down in this town. Can you guess which of these houses belongs to Nikki? 
in which Peter and Becky live, and in which Douglas has chosen? House number one belongs to Peter and Becky. There are two bicycles next to it. House number two belongs to the journalist. Do you see his equipment? And the remaining house, house number three, belongs to Nikki. Whose wife is a vampire? This guy's wife is a vampire because she only came to the party after sunset. Whose husband is a werewolf? The girl on the left is sweeping up her cat's hair. See? There's a cat in the background. Meanwhile, there are scratches on the floor and walls in the house of the girl on the right. And this shoe has a torn front. Her husband must be a werewolf. Whose wife is actually a ghost? The woman on the right is wearing a ghost costume. It's Halloween. But the woman on the left is a real ghost because we can't see her legs under the sheet. Whose husband is actually a zombie? The man on the left is just sick. The man on the right is a zombie because he's the only one who doesn't eat human food and has an empty plate. Water lilies grow on the lake. Every day, their number doubles. The lilies will completely cover the entire surface of the lake in 48 days. How many days will it take them to cover half of the lake? Forty-seven days. You see, every day the number of the water lilies doubles. On day 48, the lake will be completely covered with lilies. It means that on day 47, there will be twice as few lilies as on day 48. Jack noticed that someone regularly ruins his lawn. He decided to install a hidden camera and figure out who approached his house most often. After four days, he decided to check the footage and immediately realized who the culprit was. Can you guess who it is? Jack's neighbor Karen ruins his lawn. She's present in all the photos, but she tries to disguise herself so that she can't be recognized. A woman didn't have her driver's license with her. She didn't stop at a railroad crossing when the barrier was lowered. Then, ignoring the stop sign, she moved in the wrong direction along a one-way street and stopped only after passing three intersections. Traffic police officers, seeing all this, decided not to interfere. Why? The woman first traveled by train and then walked. Mary is trying to enter an ice castle to save her friend Logan, but there's a combination lock on the gate. Luckily, there's a clue carved on the ice. Here it is. 162. One number is correct and in the right place. 842. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 526. Nothing is correct. Can you guess the code? The passcode is 184. First, we exclude 2 and 6, since in 526, no number is correct. In 842, two numbers are correct, so two of the numbers we need are 8 and 4. The last number must be 1, and since 1 is in its place, we can easily figure out where 8 and 4 must go. Mary opens the gate and enters the castle. She walks down an icy corridor and comes across three doors. There is a severe snowstorm behind the first door. In the second room, there's a dangerous snow dragon. And behind the third door, there's a lake covered with a layer of dark blue ice. Which door should Mary choose? The dragon is a definite no-no. The dark blue ice is thin and unsafe. Mary is likely to just fall into the lake. The first door is the best option. 
Mary crosses the room and finds herself in a long corridor. The Ice Queen's monsters start chasing her. The girl runs down the hallway and sees another three doors made of clear ice. There's a magical snow parrot in the first room. The second room is filled with water. And there's a small black room behind the third door. It looks more like a locker. Which door should Mary hide behind to avoid being found? The Ice Queen's parrot behind the first door will scream when it sees Mary. The third door is a bad option because the doors are made of clear ice, so the monsters will spot her immediately. The second door is the best option. Mary swims away and finds herself in a big hall. She sees Logan, and they're about to run away together when the Ice Queen captures them in a cage. There are three levers next to the cage, and the Ice Queen gives Mary these hints. The first lever is going to open the cage, but they'll fall into a freezing cold underground lake. The second lever will open all the cages in the castle and release all the monsters that are inside. The third lever will open the cage, but only one person will be able to get out. What should the guys do? They should pull the third lever and let Logan out. After that, they should pull the first lever. Mary will fall into the water, but Logan will help her get out of the lake. John decided to make a vegetable salad for his friends. To prepare for it, he will need three peppers and the same number of tomatoes. And he needs fewer cucumbers than tomatoes, but more than radishes. How many different vegetables will John use in the salad? Nine point three peppers, three tomatoes, two cucumbers, and one radish. A professor went to have his lunch break, leaving three students in the lecture hall. When he returned, he realized that an answer sheet for an important exam had disappeared from his desk. He questioned the students. Kyle said, Ten minutes after you'd left, my mom called me and asked me to meet with her near the college building. When I returned, the sheet was already gone. Brian said, no one called Kyle. He took something from your desk and left. And Ryan said, Brian is telling the truth. When we realized that it was an answer sheet, we ran after him outside, but he had already left. Who should the professor believe? Ryan and Brian are lying. They said they had run after Kyle outside, but it was raining and they're both dry. Which of these artists is suspicious? The girl on the right has been using orange paint, not red. Then why do her clothes have red stains? Who is suspicious at this party? The second girl marked this glass to know which of them contained poison. Which of these students is suspicious? Student 3 only pretends to be writing. He's actually reading a magazine. Which of these women is suspicious? The woman on the right is only pretending to be pregnant. A prince married a simple girl and brought her to the palace. His mother, the queen, didn't like it at all. She started watching the girl and discovered that she secretly took some jewelry out of the palace and hid it in the ground under an oak tree. The queen immediately went to the prince and told him about it. The prince checked under the oak tree and actually found the jewels. His wife started begging him, My prince, I swear, I didn't steal it for myself. I'm leaving the jewelry here so that my family can pick it up later. But the queen said, She's lying to you. She hides the jewelry here because she wants to sell it when she runs away from the palace. Who's lying? The girl's lying. No one forbids her to visit her family or give them whatever they need openly. She hides it because she'll need the money after running away. 
John had a lunch break, so he went to the butcher to buy some meat. He asked the butcher to cut the meat in a specific way. The butcher asked if John was a firefighter. John said yes. How did the butcher guess John's profession? John was still wearing his uniform when he went on his lunch break. Mary went to the forest to pick some berries and mushrooms. Sometime later, the girl realized she had gotten lost. Suddenly, she heard the trees crackling behind her back. There was a monster approaching! Mary ran as fast as she could and managed to get away from the monster. She saw a small house and went inside. An elderly lady lived in the house. She said she would help Mary, but Mary immediately realized that this lady was a shapeshifter. She was the monster in the forest! How did Mary know that? Have you noticed that the elderly woman has the same symbol on her hand as the monster had? Luckily, it turned out that the woman was not actually evil. She helped Mary to get out of the forest. The elderly lady from the forest has three cats. Snowball, Bella, and Lisa. They usually sleep on three different pillows, yellow, pink, and blue. Bella likes sleeping on the pink pillow. Snowball never chooses either pink or blue. Think about it and try to guess which pillow each of the cats sleeps on. Bella sleeps on the pink pillow. Snowball lies on the yellow one. And Lisa sleeps on the blue one. Now it's time to think fast. Why is Santa Claus so good at karate? Because he has a black belt, duh. What bear has no teeth? Marmalade bear. How can you make a rattlesnake cry? Take the rattle away. <laughs>